Episode 26, The Mirror of Reality. Welcome back to Barking at the Matrix, the space where science and spirit sit at the same table, where we explore not only what is real, but how reality itself might be shaped by the mind that perceives it. Today's episode is a meditation on mirrors, not the kind made of glass, but the kind made of meaning. We'll explore how the world around us reflects our inner state, how perception is shaped by expectation, and how consciousness may be more participatory than passive. This isn't just poetic metaphor. It's a convergence of neuroscience, psychology, spiritual wisdom, and quantum theory. And if we follow the thread far enough, we may begin to see that reality is not something we observe from the outside, but something that responds to our gaze. Let's begin with perception, not as a passive reception of sensory data, but as an active construction of experience. Modern neuroscience has revealed that the brain is not a camera, faithfully recording the external world. Instead, it's more like a prediction engine, constantly generating models of what it expects to encounter and updating those models based on incoming sensory input. This process is known as predictive coding, and it suggests that what we perceive is shaped as much by our expectations as by the raw data itself. Imagine walking into a familiar room. You don't consciously register every detail, the texture of the carpet, the angle of the light, the placement of each object. Your brain fills in the gaps based on memory and context. You see what you expect to see. And unless something violates that expectation, a broken lamp, a missing chair, you won't even notice the difference. This is not a flaw, it's a feature. It allows us to navigate the world efficiently. But it also means that our perception is filtered, biased, and incomplete. We don't see the world as it is, we see it as we are. Now let's turn to psychology. The concept of projection describes how we unconsciously assign our own thoughts, emotions, and beliefs onto others. If we're feeling insecure, we may interpret neutral feedback as criticism. If we're carrying anger, we may perceive hostility in a stranger's face. The world becomes a mirror not of objective truth, but of our emotional landscape. This plays out in relationships, in politics, in art, and in everyday interactions. We react not to what's happening, but to what we believe is happening. And those beliefs are shaped by our past, our conditioning, and our emotional patterns. But here's the empowering part. When we begin to notice our projections, we gain the ability to change them. And when we change what we project, the reflections around us begin to shift. Spiritual traditions have long understood this principle. In Hermetic philosophy, the axiom as within, so without, suggests that the outer world reflects the inner world. In Buddhism, the teaching of dependent origination reveals that nothing exists independently, everything arises in relation to everything else. And in indigenous cosmologies, we find the belief that we are dreaming the world into being, that consciousness is not separate from creation, but an active participant in it. These teachings are not just mystical poetry. They are invitations to live more consciously, to recognize that our thoughts, emotions, and intentions ripple outward into the fabric of reality, that the world is not fixed but fluid, not static but responsive. Even quantum physics offers a provocative parallel. At the subatomic level, particles exist in a state of probability until observed. The famous double-slit experiment shows that electrons behave like waves, spread out and undefined, until a measuring device forces them to choose a path. Some interpretations suggest that the act of observation collapses the wave function, turning possibility into actuality. While physicists debate the implications, the metaphor is compelling. What we observe, we influence. What we measure, we shape. And what we attend to, we bring into form. Could it be that our everyday choices of focus, our thoughts, our emotions, our beliefs, are a kind of continuous measurement, subtly sculpting the reality we experience? The science remains cautious. The spirit whispers yes. Let's bring this into the realm of daily life. Think about your relationships. Have you ever noticed how your mood changes the way people respond to you? When you're grounded and calm, others seem more relaxed. When you're anxious or defensive, the world feels more reactive. This isn't coincidence. It's resonance. 
We are wired to mirror each other through facial expressions, tone of voice, even the rhythm of our breath and heartbeat. Mirror neurons in the brain fire in response to the emotions and actions of others, creating a kind of shared experience. The mirror is not just metaphorical, it's biological, and it's everywhere. Now let's go deeper. Consider how your environment reflects your inner state. When you're feeling overwhelmed, even a tidy room can feel chaotic. When you're at peace, even a noisy street can seem serene. The external world doesn't change, but your relationship to it does. This is why mindfulness practices are so powerful. They don't change the world, they change the lens through which the world is seen. And when the lens shifts, the reflection shifts with it. Let's explore the mirror in art. Artists have long used mirrors as symbols of introspection, illusion, and truth. In literature, mirrors reveal hidden selves. In painting, they distort or clarify. In cinema, they often mark moments of transformation when a character confronts who they've become or glimpses who they might be. But art itself is a mirror. What we see in a painting, a poem, or a film is shaped by what we bring to it. The same story can feel tragic or triumphant depending on our mood, our history, our beliefs. Art doesn't just reflect the artist. It reflects the viewer, and so does life. Let's talk about collective mirrors. Culture is a mirror of shared attention. What we focus on, through media, conversation, and collective imagination, shapes the stories we tell, the values we uphold, and the futures we envision. When fear dominates the collective gaze, we see division, scarcity, and threat. When compassion leads, we see possibility, connection, and renewal. Movements rise when millions focus on a common vision. Markets crash when panic spreads. Elections swing when narratives shift. Our global reality is, in many ways, a massive experiment in distributed attention. And the mirror is always watching. So what does this mean for how we live? It means that every moment is an invitation not to control the world but to tune our own frequency. To ask ourselves, what am I projecting? What am I expecting? What am I creating? Because the mirror doesn't lie, it simply reflects. And if we want to change what we see, we must begin by changing what we bring. Let's end with a practice. Close your eyes if you can, take a slow, intentional breath. Feel the air enter your body, feel it leave. Now imagine the world around you as a vast, shimmering mirror, not cold or hard, but fluid, luminous, alive. What do you see reflected? And what would you like to see? Hold that image gently, let it guide your attention. Let it shape your day. This has been Barking at the Matrix, the space where science meets spirit, and where the mirror of reality reveals the hidden architecture of the mind. If this episode resonated with you, if it sparked a new insight, stirred a question, or simply gave you a moment of clarity, consider sharing that reflection. Please take a moment to like, comment, and subscribe. Your engagement helps this podcast reach more curious minds. When you share your thoughts, you're not just responding, you're participating in the conversation. Thank you for listening. Stay curious. Stay awake. And may your reflection become the light that transforms the world.